Hello everyone, welcome to this fly time video. Today we're going to tie the Corixa, or the water boatman as you call it in America. And this is a small bottom living aquatic insect, so it lives on the bottom of slow moving waters. And it's quite a short and fat little guy, so here I'm tying it on a size 14. This hook here is about one centimeter from the whole shank, so these insects can be up to 13 millimeters, so this works really well. And to start this off, these have quite a wide profile. What I will do is I will use my lead free wire, this one is the 0 0.015, and I'm going to set down about yeah, 12 turns or so and this is going to cover the whole shank of the hook but what you want to do is to leave just a little bit of space right behind the eye and before the band so here break off the two ends and then I'm going to make this a little bit flatter using my pliers and here you want to squeeze this but don't squeeze too much or you'll break the wire so what we want to do is to make it a little wider like this and then our best friend the super glue and I'm going to put down a coat right on top a little bit in front on the back and then on the underside as well so what you want to do is to coat this whole flattened wire so it won't move ever again. And now wait for it to dry completely before starting to tie. And this is the prepping done for the flies. So what you can do is to do a whole bunch of these and just put them aside and then tie them once you have done about 10 or so. And this way you won't lose any time changing materials and bobbins and uh, different stuff. So before starting to tie I will quickly go through all the materials that we need for this one. The thread I'm using is the Nano Silk from Semplify. This is the 12 volt in white and this is to match the color of the body or the underside, the belly of the abdomen is going to be white. Then I'm also going to use some red, bright red thread for the head of the fly and this is going to represent the eyes. I've seen quite a few pictures with these corixas, corixai, corix, yeah, with bright red eyes and they are quite big. So this is what I use for the head. To rib the fly I'm going to use some small silver wire. This one is from UTC and on this size 14 the small works really well. For the back cover, and this is going to represent the wings, and these have two wide wings that are laying right alongside the body or on top of the body. So for this I'm using some dyed brown pheasant tail, but you could also use some Swiss straw or any backing material that you want. I just find this gives a nice effect when covered with the UV resin. The hook I'm using, if I forgot to mention it, is the Tiemco 113 BLH, which is this heavy nymph hook. Then for the legs, and these have really big wide legs, so for this I'm going to use some goose bites. These ones have been dyed in brown. For the body, or the abdomen, or the belly, I'm going to use a dubby mix, and here I'm going to mix some line fur dubbing, this is some rabbit fur in white. And with this I'm going to mix in a few of these synthetic fibers, this is the SLF. And this one is in pearl. And I'm also going to use some ice dub here in the Calibatis color. And this is like a light grey or light tan with some UV stuff in it. Then for the thorax, or mostly the head of the fly, these have 
a quite wide and big head, I'm going to use a darker dubbing mix. This one is my dark bug mix with a little bit of spikier fibers and also some UV in it. And these are all the materials that you need for this fly. I will also put in the description all the materials if you missed something. And what do you guys think about showing all the materials before starting to tie? Do you find this useful? If you do, just leave here. I will have a pop-up so you can just answer the question if you find this useful or not. And this way I know if I should continue doing it like this or if I go back to what I usually do. So here are the thread, 12 volt nano silk from Samplefly. I'm going to start right in front of the wire and then go over the wire and as you can see here it won't move the slightest bit. This is all stuck onto the hook and this is exactly what we want because if it was not really secure it's going to move around and spin and this is not good for any fly. Then the rib is going to be this small silver wire and here I'm taking off a little piece from the spool and I'm going to tie this in on the underside. Usually I tie them on to the side but on this one with this really wide profile it would make it quite difficult to tie in to the side so I'm going to tie it in right on the bottom and then I'm going to turn the vise again and take it down just to the bend and then I'm going to go up again to the two third point and I'm going to take my backing material, this is this pheasant tail and I will take about 8, 9, 10 fibers or so and the idea here is to have this wide back on the fly. What I will do is take them off the stem then cut off the ends and what I like to do is to use my velcro to go through it and this is going to separate these a little and I think it makes for a little bit easier to tie them in right beside each other. This way they will lay quite flat and also have this wide spread all over the top. And then I'm going to tie these in the whole length of the body. And here I will try to make them as wide as possible to cover the most of the back. And take them down to the wire as well. And then up again a little bit, cut off the ends or the tips. And now we're going to make the dubbing mix for the body. And I've looked at photos of these little insects and I've seen that sometimes they have really bright uh, bellies. So what I will do is to do just a finger mix between a little bit of this rabbit dubbing, rabbit fur. And then take just a small pinch of this prism SLF in pearl and then the UV Calibatis ice dub and this is going to add even more shimmer to the fly and I really like to add some UV materials or UV dubbing to all my flies I just think it looks really good and I am a strong believer in in UV in this UV stuff in these dubbings. So I'm just doing a finger mix and then if you're going to tie a lot of these I would recommend you use a coffee grinder or any other dubbing mix tool to just mix up a bunch of this dubbing right at once and this one is also a nice mix to have just laying around anytime you want some light bright white with a whole lot of shimmer to it. And then I just dubbed this on to the thread and I'm going to go up the whole length of the body and here we don't need so much of this dubbing as we've already built up quite a bit of the shape of the fly with both the wire and the thread and here I had just a little bit too much of this dubbing and I'm going to take this up right to the end 
of the wire and then I'm going to go down to the bare hook I'm going to split the stubbing or make it go down a little bit to the sides and then I'm going to take over my pheasant tail and here you want to try to make these not lay over each other but right beside each other so this can be a little tricky but you just have to not take no for an answer and then when you're happy tie it down make sure you're getting a few wraps right here to really secure this and then one in front and what we'll do now is to bring up the rib and here you have to make sure that the back material stays right in place so you can move it around a little bit with your fingers just push it back as you go the material will turn a little bit just make sure that it doesn't turn too much and it and you keep it right in the center and then once you reach the thread we can then tie off the wire as well a few turns then bend and break this away and we can also cut off the ends of the pheasant tail and these you want to cut really close and now we're going to change the thread to the bright red and I'm just going to start right behind the eye and I'm going down building up a small little thorax area or head area on this fly and then we can cut these two off and now we're going to tie in the legs and these are going to be some goose biots and these here have been dyed in brown so I'm going to take two off the stem and then I'm going to cut off the ends this way they are a lot easier to manage I'm going to put one aside for now and I'm going to tie this one in on my side with a natural curve or bend splaying out from the body. So right in front of the abdomen I'm going to tie the first one in and you want these to be the whole length of the body. These legs on these little flies or, or these little insects are really big so you have to make this a big part of your fly as well. So the first one on my side and then the other one on the other side and we will try to have these right on the sides and not on top or on the bottom and then I'm going to take this up right to the eye and these ends we're going to leave on to make like some additional legs or represent the big eyes or the big head on this fly and here if you're not happy just move these around a little bit before tying down and there we go and now to the head dubbing I'm going to use this darker mix And I'm just going to dub on a tiny amount, you don't need much. We just want to cover this bright red thread on the thorax or the head and then we're going to make a little hot spot right in front. And then we're going to take this back just a little bit. Make sure you really bind down these legs. These are quite slippery and thread as well. So the stubbing is going to help a little bit to bind all this down. So you have to make sure that you really pull on your turns here, right on in the thorax area. And then I'm going to go up to the front. And I'm going to try to make a few turns right behind the eye and here pull any material that wants to go forward back and then 
a few turns then grab your whip finisher and we're going to make a three turn whip finish and then pull tight and here we have to make sure that we don't crowd the eye and then pull tight and we're going to cut off the thread then we have these two little biots or the ends of the biots sticking out and I'm going to cut these quite close and these are going to make these two little legs or whatever this is going to represent it's going to make the profile just slightly wider on the fly and going to push a little bit of water creating a disturbance and this I think is a quite good property of any fly to make some disturbance in the water then I'm going to coat the head with a little bit of super glue and this is going to make this bright red really stand out and also make sure this doesn't come undone and then what I will do is to coat the back as well with the super glue and this is to allow me to use some UV resin later if I were to use the UV resin right away you will have to zap it really really fast or get a quite thick UV resin to not go down into these fibers and down into the dubbing so what I like to do is just put a coat of super glue and this is this zappa gap stuff I use it because it has a brush and then it's just to wait and this should not take too long as we're dealing with super glue and then the last thing to do is to grab oh I forgot to mention we also need some UV resin, this one is my favorite from Deer Creek, the Diamond Fine Flex. And this has this little flex or bounce to it, so if you use it as a back material or on any wire jig or wire nymph, it will not chip as easily or not chip at all. I fished this quite a lot and it has this little rubbery feel to it once it's set with the UV torch so what you will get is a really secure and nice back to the fly so what you do is to put down a thin coat and then I'm going to sap it with light and if you get like a little drop like here so just set it with the UV torch and then what you can do is just to pull it away once it's dry and here I have this really old or quite old I've had it for a few years UV lamp and this one takes quite a long time to set these resins so here I will use a little bit more time I've been wanting to change this up for quite a while now so if you guys have any suggestions or recommendations on good UV lamps just leave them in the comment section below I would be really happy to hear what you guys have to say about it and then I'm going to add just a tiny bit more and this is going to make this a little bit thicker and also really bring out the pheasant tail fibers underneath and this is the look I'm after on this fly and then I'm going to cure it again so there we have this little corixa a nice slow water pattern so tie some up or grab them from the catalog the link is right in the description so thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already See you next time and happy time.